वेलकम माई सेल्फ रुद्दू डी पटेल केमिस्ट्री लेक्चरर एट पारुल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी डिप्लोमा स्टडीज वेलकम्स यू ऑल टू द एक्टिव लर्निंग वीडियो सेशन ऑन द केमिस्ट्री इन दिस सेशन वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग वेस्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट दैट इज चैप्टर नंबर फोर दैट इज कवर्ड इन डिप्लोमा सिलेबस ऑफ द जी टी यू लेट एस ट्राई टू बिगिन अवर लेक्चर एंड सी वॉट टॉपिक्स वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इन टूडे सेशन टूडे सेशन कंसिस्ट ऑफ वी विल बी डिफाइनिंग हार्ड वाटर सॉफ्ट वाटर देन वी विल बी सींग द यूनिट्स ऑफ द हार्डनेस एंड टाइप्स ऑफ हार्डनेस देन वी विल बी सींग वॉट आर द सॉल्ट रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर हार्डनेस देन वी विल बी डिस्क्राइबिंग हाउ वी कैन टेक द मैथड्स टू एक्सप्रेस द हार्डनेस देन वी विल सी वॉट इज डिफरेंस बिटवीन स्केल एंड स्लच वॉट इज प्राइमिंग वॉट इज फोमिंग and its prevention then we will be discussing caustic embrittlement then we will see permutated process in detail we will be studying ion exchange process then we will be looking at water purification techniques that are by screening sedimentation coagulation filtration okay then we will be seeing sterilization of the water by boiling by use of chlorine and by use of the bleaching powder these are the index of our today's topic and these topics will be covered in the entire session let us try to begin as you all are aware that water is the life and water is a very essential component to for the survival of the all the living beings so you all should know that it is very necessary for us to preserve the water and we have to find out every day the new techniques how to purify the waters we have to take care in mind that we should minimize the wastage of water and try to utilize it in the proper way let us try to see what are the sources of the water river pond lakes wells sea water ground these all are the sources of our water okay now we can see what are the chances of the impurities present in the water there may be some dissolved impurities like salts or there may be the suspended impurities like you can say that clay particles and many more thing can be suspended on the surface of the water there can be colloidal impurities as well these colloidal impurities are not ready to set at the bottom after the setting of the water microorganisms bacteria algae all these things are probability of being present into water so we have classified what impurities are actually present in the water we can say dissolved salt suspended impurities colloidal impurities microorganisms etc we can see now what is actually the requirement of the drinking water the drinking water that we are going to use it should have it should actually fulfill certain criteria what are those criteria it should be clear odorless and colorless it should be clear from turbidity and suspended impurities it should be free from microorganisms it should be soft so its hardness level should be very less we will be seeing what is hard water what is soft water in the detail so these are the basic criteria that one has to remember that the requirement of the drinking water has to be fulfilled before using it for the domestic purpose let us try to understand what is hard water the hard water is water which do not produce leather with soap is called hard water it means when you try to rub a soap with this water then what happens foam will not be produced that much easily so this kind of water is known as your hard water water that is hard actually contains the dissolved salts of calcium and magnesium so this we have to remember and these calcium and magnesium salts are actually responsible for the hardness of the water now what is soft water 
water which produce leather with soap is called soft water now this soft water actually do not contain calcium and magnesium salt so we can use this soft water for the domestic purposes okay so this is the term that hard water and soft water are classified on the basis of the presence of the calcium and magnesium salts now let us try to see what are the types of water hardness there are basically two types of water hardness one is temporary hardness and another is permanent hardness now why these names are there the temporary hardness itself suggest that these hardness can be removed but the permanent hardness the name itself suggests that it is very difficult to remove this hardness now let us try to see what are the definitions of this hardness temporary hardness arises in water due to presence of calcium bicarbonate and magnesium bicarbonate salts so these actually calcium and magnesium bicarbonate salts are responsible to give temporary hardness in the water now these can be removed actually by boiling the water so this is known as your temporary hardness let us try to see what happens on the heating whenever you are heating or you are boiling the water then what happens your calcium bicarbonate gets converted to calcium carbonate and your magnesium bicarbonate gets converted to magnesium carbonate this is actually the conversion that is taking place when you are heating the hard water now let us try to see what is permanent hardness this permanent hardness arises because of presence of chlorides and sulfates of calcium and magnesium one has to remember whenever we are talking of the temporary hardness it means we are talking of the bicarbonate salts of calcium and magnesium but when we are talking of the permanent hardness it means we are talking of the chlorides and sulfate salts of calcium and magnesium so this gives rise to basically the permanent hardness now what are the salts let us try to classify the total hardness based salts and we have also given the chemical formula for all the salts we have calcium bicarbonate that is indicated as cahco3 twice magnesium bicarbonate that is indicated as mghco3 twice then we have calcium chloride which is given as cacl2 then we have magnesium chloride which is given as mgcl2 we have calcium sulfate that is given as caso4 then we have magnesium sulfate that is given as mgso4 now you all can see here very clearly on the basis of above definitions calcium bicarbonate and magnesium bicarbonate basically belongs to the temporary hardness category while calcium chloride magnesium chloride calcium sulfate magnesium sulfate salts basically belong to the permanent hardness category salts so this has to be kept in mind while solving the numericals because we have to identify the salts which are the temporary hardness salts and which are the permanent hardness salts now we have seen actually the salt names now we will be looking at the molecular weights of the salt the calcium bicarbonate is having the molecular weight of 162 gram per mole magnesium bicarbonate is having molecular weight of 146 gram per mole then we have calcium chloride which is having the molecular weight of 111 gram per mole or you can say 110 value is also the correct value for calcium chloride salt then we have magnesium chloride salt that is having 95 gram per mole then we have calcium sulfate salt which is having 136 gram per mole and magnesium sulfate is having 120 gram per mole of the molecular weight now how this molecular weights are coming that we'll be looking up in the next session how this 
value comes actually in that what we are doing we are taking each and every atom and we are adding all the things together and we'll add the final data that we are getting is total molecular weight of that particular salt so that we'll be seeing in the next session let us try to understand what are the methods to express the water hardness basically there are three methods that is given degree clark degree french and parts per million these three are the widely used methods to express the water hardness now what is actually degree clark it is defined as number of parts by weight of calcium carbonate present in 70000 parts by weight of water then we have degree french that is defined as number of parts by weight of calcium carbonate present in 1 lakh parts by weight of water this is your degree french then we have parts per million it is defined as number of parts by weight of calcium carbonate per million parts by weight of water so in general we can see here very clearly that there are basically three methods degree clark then we can say degree french and then we have parts per million that is known as your ppm so this is the thing now what is the relation between all these terms all this in relation is 1 ppm equal to 0 0.1 degree french and 1 ppm equal to 0 0.07 degree clark so whenever there is a conversion asked in the numericals that calculate the hardness of water in ppm or degree french or degree clark then first you can derive the answer in terms of ppm and then by using these formulas you can convert it directly to the degree french or degree clark so this one has to remember while solving the numericals now what is the formula to calculate the hardness of the dissolved salt very important formula from the numerical point of view that is you can use this formula weight of the salt into molecular weight of calcium carbonate divided by molecular weight of the salt this one has to remember okay so this is actually the hardness of the dissolved salt this turns out to be weight into 100 divided by molecular weight of the salt so this is the formula for the hardness of water now let us try to understand what is the effect of hard water okay we are using the water in industries and domestic purposes but it is very necessary for industry to take care of the water use because certain ph water is used there otherwise the product that is desired in industry may not be obtained if the water is not taken to be care it means what if it is using hard water in the some use industries like you can say textile industries sugar industries all these industries if they use the hard water then what problem can occur that we are going to see now whiteness of paper is affected by use of hard water in paper industry okay then stains develop on clothes due to use of hard water in textile industry so what is happening if you are using this hard water in paper industry then your paper quality will be very different the whiteness of the paper will be getting affected by use of the hard water and if you are using hard water in textile industry there are chances because in textile is dealing with different color shades so what happens there are chances that stains may develop on the clothes by use of this hard water in textile industry then we can see here effect of the hard water is proper color shade may not develop on the clothes it is like if you are desiring some color then what happens with the help of hard water what will happen if you are using hard water in textile field then desired color shades may not be obtained on the clothes then we can say in sugar industry 
proper crystallization of the sugar may not take place if we are using hard water for crystallization process so this all care has to be taken whenever you are using the water in the industry we can see what problems can take place if we are using hard water over there then coming to the live part that is you can say it causes it means hard water may harm the digestive system or the kidneys of the human beings and skin damage and hair damage may happen with the hard water pulses and vegetables may not be cooked properly if we are utilizing the hard water for the cooking purpose what care we have to take whenever we are using water in the boiler in industries now see we have to take care that boiler fed water should be free from turbidity oil dissolved oxygen carbon dioxide and non scaling dissolved salts this one has to keep in mind whenever you are using boiler fed water now what is this scale formation in boiler this is a one term scale and sludge you will come across the entire things on the scale and sludge there are two terms okay now see it is precipitated matter which forms a hard adhering coating on inner side of the boiler so this scale is actually something that precipitates out and forms a very hard adhering coating on the inner side of the boiler and scales are actually bad conductor of the heat okay this one has to remember you can see here in the diagram very clearly that there is a here is they are showing that what happens in the boiler hard adherent adhering coating on the inner walls of boiler that is your scale and if it is a loose precipitate suspended in water that is known as your sludge the diagram shows very clearly that there is one boiler wall and there is a water so what are the concepts of the scales and sludge remember always scale is a hard substance it is a hard thing that is precipitate which is getting adhering on the inner walls of the boiler but sludge is a very loose sm slimy ppt so you can see here very clearly the sludge formation in the boiler it is soft slimy loose deposit that are formed inside the boiler it is formed at cooler parts of the boiler look here in the diagram here is the thing that is your sludge is a loose slimy deposit okay so this one has to remember now let us try to see this sludge is actually formed at the cooler parts of the boiler please remember that it is formed at cooler parts but that sludge was